a great tragedy in our country. It was just actually on Friday when 20 children and their teachers were killed in their church in a seemingly <coughs> mindless act of violence. School. And it, I said church, I'm sorry. School. It's going to be a hard sermon for me, so that won't be the first mistake I make, so be merciful. So they were killed there in their school. And it made me remember right away uh, my mother who worked for most of her life uh, as a, in, in the hospital where she would be in the emergency room all the time. And she said that for her, uh, she could take care of anyone, didn't matter how hurt they were, didn't matter anything, unless it was somebody who was the age of me or my sister. In which case, it was very hard for her because she couldn't separate that person from us. And it's not that she walked away, but it was very difficult for her. And I think one of the reasons that this is uh, very difficult for me is because all of these children who were killed are in the same uh, grade as my Natasha. And so it really drives the point home. But I don't think that it's just me. I think that this is something that really has touched everyone. And I think it would be very bad if we sort of uh, look the other way as the church and we didn't do anything or say anything or look for some way that we could work through this with God's help. And so today, I'm sure you noticed that we had a special petition that was used in the church and I'm going to read it to you because sometimes during the service we don't pay attention, someone is making noise or something is happening and I want you to hear the petition that Bishop Peter asked us to, to, to use in the church today. To thee, O Lord, who art in heaven, we raise up the eyes of our soul and lift our hands and sigh from the depths of our heart. And praying with our speech, we cry out, give rest to the blessed infants and to those who suffered with them in the present trouble and sorrow. Hearken to those who weep in our pain and await thy consolation, asking thy goodness. We ask thy mercy and seek to obtain grace before thee, and we knock upon thy doors. Open to us the doors of thine abundant kindness and abandon us not to the end for thy name's sake. Let us say, Lord, hearken soon and have mercy upon all. This, I think, is very important for us to contemplate what is happening and to see it through the eyes of our faith. And today's gospel is very helpful in that regard. It's very helpful for us. This is the gospel where the young man comes to the Lord and he's rich and he says, what do I need to do to be saved? And he tells, you know, do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. And he says, well, I did all that. And he says, well, sell everything that you have and come and follow me. And he can't do it. And then there's this discussion about camels and eyes of needles and, and all of that stuff. But the very last verse is, I think, the really key one that helps us a lot. And it is this. The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. The things that are impossible with men are, are possible with God. Now, when we see something like this happen, we want to understand it in such a way that we will put it into a box that we have created, of course. A box that makes sense to us. So we say, okay, it doesn't fit in that box or that box or that box. Therefore, everything is evil and everyone is evil and this world is evil and everything is bad. And First things first. The things that are impossible with men are possible with God. We are not God. We cannot understand every single thing that happens on this earth. And if we try to, we will drive ourselves insane. And I mean it. You will drive yourself crazy. It's not that we should ignore everything and not try to understand everything. But sometimes we have to humble ourselves and say, you know what? That's above my pay grade. I don't get it. And I just need to trust God. Now there are two things that happen in this world. There are things that God wills. And there are things that God allows. Let us not mix up those two things. Just because something happens does not mean that God wills it. That's very important for us. If that's the case, then God is evil. And what are we doing here? So we need to take a step back. The Lord has given us all free will. It's only by our free will that we can be saved. Otherwise, we're robots. Otherwise, he is just playing a big chess game with full-size pieces all over this earth. We can choose to love God and do good. We can choose to not love God and do bad. The choice is ours. The Lord will not deprive us of this choice. But that means that some things happen on this earth that he does not will, but are somehow allowed. This reminds me very much of the 
I don't know why, because these things happened, the, the thing happened in, in the movie theater, and somehow this really seems to have touched a, a, a nerve in our society, not dissimilar to what happened at 9-11, when all those people were killed. Probably because there's an innocence that we lose, or that we've lost. Even when those kids were killed in the high school in Colorado, it didn't touch us as much as this. And I think it's because of the, the young ones who were involved in this. Now we have two ways that we can look at this, that we can approach this. We can either approach this as people of hope and faith and love in God, or we can approach this as secular people who just say, well, there's just another horrible, terrible thing that happened, you know, and the world stinks and everything is bad. I probably don't have to tell you which one we need to strive to, to, to approach in that way. It's just like the suffering that we will all endure. I'm sorry, but there are very few of us who will not endure some suffering on this earth. Whether that be physical suffering or psychological suffering or suffering because someone else is suffering, we will suffer. But do we suffer as people of hope in the resurrection who trust that the Lord understands better than we do what's happening, that He is above our pay grade and not equal to us? Or do we suffer as people who only live for this earth? Do we suffer as people who are trying to hold on with both hands to this earth and this life and not living for the next? It's all rhetorical, of course. The question is, we need to try to strive as people who have hope for the resurrection. How do we explain such a thing? And I don't think at this time it makes sense to try to parse it on such a level. We don't understand a lot of the context. We just understand what happened. We understand the outcome, but we don't understand what led up to it, how it happened, and we are wasting our time if we are trying to parse every move of the shooter, if we are trying to think about oh, what a bad mother he had because he killed his mother. It's all just wrong. As Christians, our job is to pray. Our job is to pray for those who died. Our job is to pray for those who are suffering. Our job is to pray for everybody there involved. Because that whole community will be scarred for generations from this. And we really must pray for that poor soul that did these horrible things. And for his family too. I don't know if you saw, I'm trying not to watch very much of it. It's good that it's, the timing was such that mostly I've been in church since this happened. But it's pretty impossible to not see some of it. And last night when I came home, one of the parents who lost a child had a kind of an impromptu press conference. And he was asking people to pray for the shooter. If he can do that, then we have to. Don't forget, brothers and sisters, who gets to judge. And the answer is, it's not us. Our job is not to judge. In fact, there is such a sin as judging. When we come to confession, most of us, including myself, usually include that in our, in our list of not-so-wonderful things that we have done over the last few weeks. And it's a sin, not because the Lord did not give us the faculty to be able to discern between right and wrong, not because he didn't give us the faculty to be able to understand that something is good and something is bad. The reason that we confess judging others is because that's not our job. That is not in our job description. That is God's job. And that's who we have to give the judgment to. Our lives are very complicated. They have many layers, many levels, many things that impact our lives. Many things from within us, many things from outside of us. We might not really ever understand everything that happened. But as Christians, we need to be able to say, that's the Lord's place to understand. And our job is to pray for the fallen. Our job is to pray for those who have pain. Our job, I would even argue, is to pray for our society. And if we don't take this horrible thing 
and make it something that motivates us to pray more, then we've completely missed everything. It's okay to say that it was bad, because it was bad. But there's no reason to dwell about all the horrible things and the horrible parents and how could such a child exist. It's garbage. We need to pray and ask the Lord to have mercy on those who were hurt and on all of us. Because whether we like it or not, that person who did that killing is not the only person like that in the world. There are others, and we need to pray. So brothers and sisters, let's not fall into step with the mass media and spend hours and hours and days and weeks watching this and drinking it in and exposing our children to it. Not that we should lie to them. We should say what happened. But we don't need to expose them. People even can get post-traumatic stress disorder from watching too much of this sort of death and destruction. It's one thing if it's a movie with robots. We know it's fake. This is not. So brothers and sisters, every time that you're tempted to turn on the television and sit back and see more and more and more of the bad things that have happened, both here and throughout the world, maybe it's better to take a few minutes to go stand in front of the icons and to pray and to ask the Lord to have mercy on those who suffer and on all of us. And if we do that, our prayer will be like a light that shines up to heaven and calls down God's mercy on our families and on the world. And it seems to me that this is just the right thing that we should be doing in the light of such a horrific event. Salvation, brothers and sisters, is something that the Lord decides on. The path that we all tread on this earth is something we decide on. Let's decide that we will do good, that we will not become spectators of such craziness, and that we will work to be an example to our families, to ourselves, and to those around us of the hope of the resurrection. Because that's what we are about, brothers and sisters, is the hope that Christ rose from the dead and that we also will. May he grant us the strength to do this. Amen.